Well, guys, this has been an interesting journey. We are looking at Professor Dave's 10 challenge questions for the Flat Earth. A member of the Flat Earth came forward and presented the Flat Earth arguments in response to these questions. So far, the first nine have been very unsuccessful for them, but I have high hopes for number 10. Actually, no, I don't, because this is the most difficult of all of them. Do anything scientific and have it published in a reputable, peer-reviewed science journal. So let's cue up the music and see how they try and get out of this one. Do anything legitimately scientific at all. Publish anything whatsoever about your model in anything reputable anywhere. Oh, okay, so now you're talking about peer review. So you want us to do something that gets accepted by the same people who are tampering with and molesting the algorithm of the search engines, for example. You know, I've got to tell you, I love the conspiracy mindset. You think that because somebody is scientifically literate, they are automatically part of a plot, a conspiracy, if you would, to suppress your efforts to reveal the truth and sell t-shirts on YouTube. Well, let me give you a little hint here. Nature is an excellent scientific journal. It has a very wide range of editors and reviewers that look at all articles that are submitted to Nature. Not one of those reviewers gives a rat's ass about your silly little conspiracy theory. So I think that if you actually have something scientific, it really won't matter that you have truth seeker in your name or description. Your data and conclusions will stand on their own. And if they stand up to scientific scrutiny as being legitimate, they'll be approved. We have strange ideas come out in science all the time. Einstein came up with a very strange and novel idea with his theory of special relativity and his theory of relativity. It bore the review of the scientific community. Will your data do that? Will your experiments do that? Let's find out. Why don't you try and do an experiment? Okay, well, our peers do review. We have an open forum, and like the Globusters show. This is kind of humorous. You consider the Globusters an open forum. All right. The Globusters is a money-making organization designed to sell t-shirts. You may not realize that, but that's what they are. They are no more a scientific review panel than a kindergarten class is. They have an agenda to push. They push that agenda. When they are presented with evidence, and classic examples include Bob Nodell demonstrating the rotation of the Earth, and Jaron demonstrating the curvature of the Earth, even when their own experiments clearly show the Earth is a sphere, they spend hour upon hour trying to come up with some convoluted explanation that somehow fits in their narrative. That's not scientific review, Chief. Try again. It's not as rigid and formal. It's not as pretentious as what you're suggesting uh, we do, but there are, there's uh, FE Core, there's... FE Core? You mean the people that put out a 45-minute video on how a mechanical gyro compass works, yet came to the conclusion they didn't know how a gyro compass was able to find north? These are not people that actually do science. These are people that sell t-shirts, okay? These are people that push an agenda. They have no idea what they're looking at. And it's demonstrable they have no idea what they're looking at. When they are told what they are looking at and it is carefully explained to them, they still don't understand what they're looking at. This is not peer review. This is not scientific review. These are people that promote an agenda, your agenda. That's not how science works. Try again. A number of groups. Um, there's many, many more 
Now the flat, the so-called flat earth society, that is not included because we agree that that's there as just something to make us look bad. Actually, I don't think the Flat Earth Society takes Flat Earth seriously at all. It's a joke to them. And you're a joke to them. You're a joke to the rest of us. That's why we have so much fun doing debunks of you. But I'm sorry they don't like you and you don't like them, but that has nothing to do with peer review. The challenge was do a scientific experiment and have it published in a reputable scientific journal with peer review. I would suggest Nature. You too could be the next Einstein to come up with a revolutionary idea that sets all of science on its ear. You could bring them the truth about the flat earth with a well-designed and conducted experiment. Go ahead and do it. And there are some people who are very sincere and legitimate in their sincerity who could make us look bad, except we don't rely on them for our own reputation. We are autodidactic. Now, by autodidactic, if you mean self-fulfilling prophecy, I can agree with you on that one, my man. It's very convenient when you put something out and then you judge it and don't submit to the review of anybody else. But, you know, there's a lot of us out here who do take you seriously because this is a very dangerous thing to have in society. The lack of critical thinking, the lack of reasoning skills is a detriment to our society. So what we do in the debunking community is we look at your claims. We evaluate them from a scientific basis. We point out where you went wrong. And in many cases, we try and teach you something. Now, it's very evident that you don't want to learn anything. You are not interested in the truth. You're interested in your narrative. But some of the people that are watching these videos are indeed interested in the truth and would like to learn something. And that's a function that we fill here on YouTube. We are a counter to nonsense like you put out. So this is kind of a yin and yang type thing. You put out crap. We point it out as crap and give the correct information. People who review these videos on both sides get to see both. Hopefully, they go with the real information that we provide. You may gain a follower or two. We may stop a hundred from going down that silly rabbit hole that you went down three years ago. Dick, we do our own research. We are independent and we don't rely on the approval or consensus of a group of people who have hidden political agendas and other agendas of profit and uh, status and things like that based on politics and uh, social fads and norms and uh, all kinds of different problems like uh, investments in the heliocentric model and uh, benefiting from uh, space programs, which get a lot of funding. You know, I kind of let you go on there for a minute just because I couldn't stop laughing and I wanted to get myself under control before I came back to the video. Who profits by having the Earth be spherical? Shipping companies, airline companies, because they can figure out the shortest distance to travel and save the most fuel while transporting their cargo and passengers? Perhaps. Is there a stock market listing for flat earth and round earth? I mean, can you point any of that out? How do I invest in the globe earth? Now, we pretty much just deal with reality. We're amused by people that deny reality, but we don't gain financially or politically or anything else by the fact the earth is a sphere. I personally don't care what shape the earth is. As it turns out, it is a sphere. I don't care. I deal with it. If the earth was flat, I'd deal with that. I don't care either way. The bottom line though is the earth is a sphere. That's reality. Now, an interesting side note on this would be Al Biruni. 
Why did Al Biruni come up with this method of measuring the radius of the earth? The powers that be in the Islamic world wanted to do two things. First, they wanted to know how much of the earth they controlled. And in order to do that, they needed to know how big the earth was. To do that, you need to know the radius of the sphere. And second of all, and perhaps more importantly from a religious standpoint, is people wanted to know what direction to face so that they could pray towards Mecca. In order to do that, you have to kind of be able to plot these great circle courses. So, for example, the mosques in Washington, D.C., they face northeast because that is the closest direction to Mecca. Mecca is south of Washington, D.C. on latitude and east. Why would they face northeast? because it's a great circle, and, and that is the true direction to Mecca from Washington, D.C., northeast. On a flat earth, that makes no sense whatsoever. On a globe earth, it makes perfect sense. That's why they face northeast. Space programs, which get a lot of funding, I mean, $300 billion a year and rising to produce CGI and things like that. that we you know, the A in NASA stands for aeronautics, and part of that money goes towards learning new things about aeronautics. We also do a lot of space travel. We have probes that go out to different parts of our solar system and beyond. We learn how to live and work in space. We learn how to manufacture and grow things in space. That's what NASA does. Quite frankly, we could triple the NASA budget and still not reach what it was during the Apollo program and still not make a dent in the total budget of the United States. Plus, you have space agencies all over the world doing similar work, in many cases cooperating with each other. So it's a good return on our investment, to be honest with you. It's so lopsided, but yet we're still here. Why do you think that is? Why are you still here? You know, why indeed? I guess the best answer to why Flat Earth is still here is that there's a certain percentage of the population that feels lost. They look for meaning in their lives. They don't understand what's going on around them, and they want to find some meaning. They find people like you that go out there and have YouTube channels and tell them what's going on in a way that they can understand. Something simple, something that is designed for gullible people, which of course is who subscribes to your channel. That and those of us that just kind of like looking at barn fires for our own personal amusement. But there are people out there that believe in conspiracy theories, a certain percentage of the population. They don't only believe in the flat earth, they also believe the moon landing is fake, like you do. They believe COVID-19 is a conspiracy and a man-made virus, like you do. They believe it's overblown to restrict us to our homes in quarantine, like you do. They believe that the earth is 6,000 years old. I don't know if you believe that. I do know you believe in a firmament, which is another ridiculous concept. But people that believe in conspiracy theories tend to buy them hook, line, and sinker because of an inherent gullibility that they have. You can be shown where to find this information. You won't look. It can be presented to you. You won't listen. Your arguments can be completely refuted. You'll make the same argument a week later. That's just the way conspiracy theorists are. And that's all you are. You're a movement, a conspiracy theory, you are the pet rock of YouTube. You flat earth priests with your waste of space channels know full well that doing anything even remotely empirical demolishes your hoax, which is why you stick to shouting conspiracy and very little else. And you handful of mindless followers hanging on to the only thing that makes you feel special. I have yet, in well over a year, come across a single valid flat earth argument that couldn't be explained by ninth grade earth science. This is no exception. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at how you responded to Dave's 10 questions. Now, 
every single question was very clearly described. There was a specific thing that you had to do. Starting with question number one, show us a model of the flat earth. Did you show us a model of the flat earth? No, not a bit. Do we have any idea where the dome is or how thick the earth is or the dimensions of the earth? Can we make a flat earth map? No, you spent your entire time talking about why the flat earth isn't a globe earth. Nobody cares about that. You were tasked with one thing and one thing only. Show me a model of the flat earth. Tell me how a lunar eclipse works. All you did was you talked about the Selene Helium. You don't even know what it is. You had no explanation for the lunar eclipse. You just shouted Selene Helium and declared victory. You ever hear of the old story about pigeons playing chess? That was pigeons playing chess. You have no answers for any of these 10 questions. All you did was spout out questions, demand apologies, put up nonsense and random slideshows with a helping of word salad tossed in on the side. So quite frankly, you embarrassed yourself and you embarrassed the Flat Earth Movement. The only thing you didn't do in this video or this series was lean over a fence and yell at some school kids and get yourself arrested. But I have high hopes for you because I think that's probably next on your agenda, because that's the way zealots work. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Now, two quick notices. First of all, hit that like, subscribe, and the bell icon down there so you can follow along with me. And second of all, with this episode, I'm concluding my Tuesday and Thursday videos. From now on, it's just going to be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I will reserve Tuesday and Thursday for special events, live streams, and I'm thinking seriously about starting a membership program, and I will be doing things with the members on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, thank you again. Hit that bell icon and that subscribe button, and I'll see you around. Take care.